Well, howdy. Thanks for tuning in for part three. Uh, I got some good news and I got some bad news for people who've been watching part one and two. I made some promises that part three is gonna include me doing all the stuff for the Z axis. And I may have forgotten a lot of footage and a lot of material for mounting the gantry. So this video is gonna be doing the gantry. And at the very end, we're gonna get into starting all the stuff we need for the Z axis. The good news is because I did that and because I made those promises, I'll be releasing part four pretty quickly after part three. I know I wait kind of roughly a week and a half or two weeks between parts. I'll probably wait like a day uh, and I'll probably edit part four right when I upload part three. The machine is pretty much in the end game of its assembly right now. As you can see, the entire frame is assembled. We got our motor mounts assembled. We got the gantry and the spindle all assembled. The only thing that's missing at this point is the enclosure, the electronics, and some of the water cooling and the dust filtration and stuff like that, which we'll get to pretty soon here. Some other things you may notice is that I've already installed a lot of the cabling that I need. They're all running through the cable chains and you'll see that I have a fancy new aviator connector connecting my spindle uh, to, well, the enclosure. So I'll get into all that. I think that'll be part either four or five, depending on how much footage we have. I know I teased a lot of the fancy little mods I've done. You can get a sneak peek of them here, but they're all gonna be in later parts of the video when it makes sense for this to talk about them. Also, I've been getting a couple questions about the table and how I constructed it and the rollers that I've been using. I will get to those very shortly as well. I wanna finish the bottom of it first and get everything in there before I show you guys how I built it so I can give you guys some tips and tricks um, about things that went wrong and things that went right. All right, no more delaying. Let's get into the video and then finally assemble our X gantry, our full frame assembly, and we can get into the Z axis and all the fun goodies. So we're picking up where we left off in the last video, uh, which is prepping the X gantry. Make sure that you line up your roller so that the gantry is in square. This is really important. To ensure this, I use the roller caps as a fixed distance between the ball screw and the actual rollers themselves. Uh, the printed tool is really unbelievable for making sure that your X gantry is lined up square to the roller itself. Um, so make sure you print this out and when you use it, make sure you measure three times and only drill once. As you are probably aware from the last video, I was not fully careful so that two of my holes are misaligned. Uh, the double sided tape would have been a much better idea than the painter's tape I used. I was just being lazy and stupid and I highly recommend you use double sided tape. Once you have all the holes drilled for the actual mounting of the gantry, the next is to align the top rail like we did on the Y beams for the punching and tapping the rest of the holes on the X gantry. It was right about here that I realized I really, really need a good workbench. So I'll probably be building that as one of the next projects in my future videos. Before mounting the BF and BK blocks, I measured the distance between the rail and the end of the steel tubing so that I could align the linear rail to the bottom as best I could. I found this method worked perfectly well. I did this so I could ensure the bottom linear rail is aligned as perfectly as I could to the top linear rail. Calipers are really helpful for doing this. As you can see in here, the center hole uh, for the gantry mounting is not needed at all. Uh, it's entirely vestigial and you don't really need to do it. I just did it because I didn't know at that point that I didn't need to do it. It is somewhat nice for determining which side is the front and which side is the back, but other than that, uh, pretty useless. With the bottom linear rail for the gantry, you're gonna wanna do the exact same thing as the top rail, which is to use the 3D printed part to align the rail where you want it, to then punch the outermost holes then drill, screw down the linear rail using those two outermost holes and punch the rest of them and drill them. Once everything is all drilled, my favorite part again is to tap the holes by hand, one at a time. After all the holes are drilled on the gantry, it is time to mount your BK and BF blocks on the gantry, as well as the bottom and top linear rails. Again, the 3D printed part here, the guide is really useful for helping and making sure you're fully aligned.
You may also notice that there is some painter's tape on my finger. Uh, there was a super minor workshop incident, uh, and I would like to unrelatedly recommend that you deburr the inside of your steel tubing as well as the outside edges, as they can be razor sharp. All joking aside, it's pretty important to deburr the inside of the steel as well to avoid cutting your fingers. I've also added a small first aid kit to the Amazon affiliate link in the description below. If you don't have one in your workshop already, I highly recommend you add one. It's one of those things that you hope you don't need, but you're glad you have it when you do need it. In my book, it's $20 well spent. But back to the build, next I made sure that the motor mount is the same as the measured distance before. The distance is important to measure like other motor mounts. In my case, I measured with the ball screw and then confirmed that the distance is the same as the ones on the Y beams. Also, I forgot to mention that before you install the X gantry, you should install the rollers onto the linear rails before you assemble and put on the BK and BF blocks. This way you can avoid having to disassemble anything when you get to installing your Z axis. Oh, hey guys. Uh, so right now, as you can see, the machine is pretty assembled. Um, we're missing the roller or the uh, Z axis right here, um, which I will do. Right now, I want to do a quick video. So the machine comes when you order the parts from the AliExpress store. They come with these little, I guess, caps you call them. They're green normally. Um, they didn't match my color scheme. So I went ahead and spray painted them orange. Uh, I have a bunch of them here. I'm gonna put them all on and hopefully this will look good. Okay, so um, I have a bunch of extras. Um, I think it's because I have to do this bottom track. But I think they just gave me a ton of extras. Um, it might be because they're one-time use. I don't really know. Uh, I try to take them out with like a little razor and they're pretty easy to pop out and pop back in. I want to today at least mount this bottom angle. Um, let me go grab it and we can test fit it. All right, well, as you can see, I have the bottom angle here. Um, and so I have one of the, this is an extra rail. Um, so this rail actually doesn't slide very well. And I contacted the Alley store and they sent me another one very quickly. So I um, highly recommend the Alley store. But so the middle hole I drilled just ever so slightly off. I'm gonna try to do it again on the front here, re-drill those, re-tap them, uh, tap the bottom holes and mount that on top of the uh, top roller there. I have my plate. Uh, Ignore this, it's, I know it's very janky, um, but I don't have a file. So this is the best I could do with sanding. It's not, it looks sharp, but it isn't, uh, and it does the job for now. Um, I got my M6 bolts here, and just a little Allen wrench, uh, and I'm going to put this on now. <sighs> okay, well, that was a lot harder than I thought. Um, we had two problems. The screw hole needed to be widened, which I did, um, but also the screw threading was a little bit messed up. So got another screw, fixed that, put it in, um, and now we are good. We have a mounted bracket. The next step is to assemble the ball screw onto the X gantry, like we did to the ball screws on the Y beams. I'm not gonna go into too much detail since we covered this in the second part of the video. So if you wanna refer to how to install this, please see that part. One important thing to note is that there's two different sizes of couplings included with the default alley kit. On one end, they're all the same because the NEMA 23s all share the same shaft size. Uh, if you're using the 23s for all your axes, that is. The other side have two different sizes. Uh, one is for the same size, which is used for the ball screw kits on the axes, which is, I believe, the 1604 or 1605 ball screws. Uh, the other one is for the smaller uh, ball screw, which is used for the Z-axis, which I believe is the 1204. So it might be important to remember um, when you print your things out, your templates for the wood plates, make sure you print them out um, <laughs> uh, without scaling them in PDF. Uh, I scaled them down to fit the page by accident and I didn't realize until I already punched the holes because uh, I didn't think about it. So I reprinted them all and now they fit perfectly.
So the old holes are, have kind of pushed those three off center. Um, so I'm just gonna be careful. It's soft plywood, so I don't think it's gonna be a big problem. I'm just gonna drill straight through. For the actual uh, face plate, I already have the holes, but I'm afraid that the holes I made are gonna throw the other ones off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill it on the back side, even though I don't want this side to show at all. Um, Cause I mean, I don't think all the holes are just straight through anyway. So I'm just gonna go from this side. I use some pretty soft plywood for this. It is really soft, so punching isn't totally necessary. I just did this to be extra careful since my previous misalignments had cost me some time. Now I'm starting to see why machinists are so OCD. It's because it's too much effort when they're not. All right, almost done. Now it's over to the drill press. First is the drilling of the spindle mount. I used two pieces of two by fours on either side to hold it straight so I could drill. I did all my drilling and tapping first before my painting so it would make sure that it was a clean color. Using the drill press on the wood plates is super straightforward and honestly too easy. Uh, all the holes are marked pretty clearly on the guide so you can just punch right through them. With all the Z-axis parts finally drilled, I think I'm gonna end the video here. Otherwise, it would be a one hour video. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Uh, all the support I've been getting on the Discord, on the comments, on Reddit, everywhere, has been really instrumental in helping me uh, do this and work more on this and kind of uh, be inspired to do more of these videos. So I really appreciate it. To the people that have subscribed, thank you so much. I think I'm nearing about 500 subscribers, which is a huge milestone for me. Um, I really didn't expect it to even gain that much uh, support. So thank you so much. And I'm really glad you guys can come on this journey with me. With all that said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe and leave your comments down below. And I'll see you guys in part four, which will be right here, somewhere like right over here.